Uh, I think probably the best people to answer that question would be the teens at Somerville High School. I definitely think there could be more opportunities. I think that Teen Empowerment, which is a program in Somerville, and it's actually going to have a more permanent place in the high school is a wonderful opportunity. Um, but there needs to be more things like that. Spaces for teens to come together, to problem solve. Also, there's got to be more job opportunities. And I think more programming, helping all students in Somerville with issues like displacement, lack of housing access, more spaces for them to be thinking about issues of identity within their community. I would hope that they would have more uh, after school activities for kids that are five and under. And then also, all I know is my, my demographic and it's, it's very hard to find summer, summer activities. I think the, the top things that we need to be doing for young people in Somerville right now is making sure that all Somervillans can still afford to live in Somerville. Uh, there's a lot of rapid change happening right now, a lot of rapid development, and we just got to make sure that uh, affordable housing, keeping people that want that are currently living in Somerville, that want to stay in Somerville, we want to keep them in Somerville. Education for children, we got to make sure that young people have access to uh, strong media education with all the technological improvements that we we just need to be keeping up with it. I would like to see more recess time, which probably means a slightly longer day. Increased investments in uh, language education at an early age. I want to, I, eventually, we should have a place where everyone who graduates from those schools is, is bilingual. More art and music education, transportation. Like you know, we don't have buses. If the tra if if you if your if your parents can't drive you to wherever the wherever the activity is you can't get there. When you're growing up, you want to have a place to go to, a place to belong. And there really are not a lot of places for kids to go. You know, it, it all comes down to financial stuff too, that parents want to be able to afford to send their kids places where they can have fun and not spend a lot of money. There's not a lot of space to kind of make your own decisions about what you're gonna do. I think most space is defined in the city and so, you know, you're at the playground and that's probably the most free that they get to be, but their time during the day is structured and there's not a lot of just doing your own thing. I have a young son here, we're not quite in the system yet, but what we hope and you know, excited about and want to see more of is uh, more vocational training, you know, more pathways that aren't specifically focused toward college, more interaction with community media. We have a great youth media program here at some of our media center, but our uh, local journalism is kind of failing right now and uh, finding more ways both through the youth, uh, you know, working on stories, but also learning how to be good consumers of media and care about it and create that demand, you know, for a city of our size, we really deserve a much better uh, local local coverage and local reporting than we have now. I think there isn't an infrastructure that shows that uh, there's a lot of partnership between out-of-school time programs and so what I want to do is start to change that by having a lot of out-of-school time programs partner and come together to provide higher quality opportunities and increase the total number of opportunities available as well as just making it affordable uh, for kids and families to attend. A lot of people their homes necessarily aren't the places where they want to hang out and having more places that teenagers can hang out without having to be at school would probably be nice. It's really hard to get a first job, I know, because I spent months trying to get mine. And outside of the handful of people who get into the summer pro jobs program here, it's not the easiest way for a student to get money. In Somerville, we still have children who encounter um, mainly economic barriers to participating in all of these things. Um, you know, when you have s kids and students who at home don't have enough food to eat and don't have the resources within their families um, to provide that for them. I work in a school, not in Somerville, but we have students who come to school hungry and that certainly prevents them from fully participating in activities. Things such as transportation and access to transportation and ways to get around. There are lots of children here in Somerville who are undocumented. The fear of repercussion or um, family pressure um, to stay sort of under the radar can hold them back. I think 
increasingly it's living in Somerville, right? One of the limitations on having a second child is that we, we don't know where to, we, we'd put it. I don't know if we could have another kid and still live in Somerville. Schedule can be, a, can be a barrier, especially for families where the parent or parents work two, three jobs. The cost of the program is a, definitely a big barrier that we want to take down and make sure we make affordable for all the programs, as well as the number and variety of programs. Those are a, another big challenge because there's a wide variety of interests and there's a wide variety of needs, and we want to make sure we're meeting all those interests and needs if kids and families of Somerville want to access them.